farther away, no, I don't want to play no games. I just want to call, see if we're okay, babe. All I want to ask you is, I don't want to push you farther away, no, I don't want to play no games. I just want to call, see if we're okay, babe. All I want to ask you is... Like it or not, with Benjamin Dixon starts now. Good morning, good morning, good morning, people. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Like It or Not, where we're free to tell the truth and not care who does. Oh, see, I, Rebecca's here. <laughs> Let me try that one more time. Good morning, good morning, good morning, people. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Like It or Not, where we're free to tell the truth. And not care who doesn't like it. <laughs> it is Friday, May 7th, 2021. Uh, hey, it's Friday, so, you know, anything goes. My bad, Rebecca. Hey, how you doing this morning? I'm doing, so we all doing black and white today? Like, so we want to do right. black we and got, white. We got the memo. We got, we got okay. we apparently so you got, the memo. So Bubba is black. <laughs> And Ben is white, and I mixed it together with my well, okay. white. I'm black and white. I'm popping the black and white. Oh, you saying I'm pr little, primarily? I saw the little. I saw the little. Yeah, I saw. I see uh -oh. it. Uh oh, it's so small of the though. Color. And so I blended <laughs> it in right, right up in here. Uh, <laughs> and right in good. the middle, right. Yeah, right there. <laughs> good morning to everybody in all the chat rooms across the different platforms. Uh, shout out to everyone on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, all the places that we stream. Hit the share, like, and subscribe button. Help us push this content through the algorithm. Your like can push us through the algorithm so more people can discover the dope content that we got at Like It or Not. What y'all doing this weekend before we get into the news and politics? Is the news and politics, it'll be there. What y'all got going on this weekend? Yeah, so um, what I have going on this weekend, because I feel like you asked me specifically that question, what I have going on this weekend is um, <laughs> I am going to, since, you know, it's the week and before my birthday, yep, yep. <laughs> I told you guys I'm going to keep reminding you every time I get on here, but I'm going to go, um, I have a nail appointment um, because I, uh, I have a performance coming up on 18th, which is after my birthday, but um, I have a nail appointment and... Um, I'm working though. That really sucks. Um, sucks and real. and then I have rehearsals for the performance. It's going to be a uh, because it is Haitian um, Heritage Month, and then on the 18th of this month is going to be Haitian Flag Day, um, and I get to represent my culture uh, by singing with um, the band that I sing with. Which I can't tell y'all because y'all might try to find me and come to the event. I don't really be trusting people like that. That's why I don't post it on my social media. Oh, I'll you let you let know. know. I'll let you know personally. I'll let yeah. you know personally. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah. other than that, um, uh. I'll be scared of folks in the streets. <laughs> so, <laughs> I hear that. Yeah. Right. I hear that. James, so, what you up to, man? Let me see. What you got this week? Uh, tomorrow, Saturday, we're doing a Mother's Day brunch with all the mothers in the family. Sunday, yes, Mother's mothers. Day. 
Yeah, mother. So Sunday, everybody is going out of town. Well, mama's going to Alabama to see uh, her sister or my auntie. So Sunday, I'm just chilling. And then Friday, tonight, patron party. So make hey, sure y'all have your hey, asses hey, there. Hey, hey, and at, hey, and um, hey. at this patron party, um, since I'm not going to be able to, to be there for the entire night, but I will be there for an hour. I'm saying 8.30 to about 9.30-ish um, or 9.15-ish. Uh, but I wanted to go ahead and let you guys know, you guys can catch us on there. I was told by our producer, <laughs> David, who set this up, that we're going to do a Q&A between, I, yeah. I don't know if Ben's going to say that early, but between I'll Bubba be and I, Ben, if you're going to be there, nobody's trying to hit X you out the mix. I just didn't know no, if you were no, going to be doing something. It's all good. Because I know you be on shows. Like, you be like, Actually, I will them busy. You be put them busy. Put them I busy. will be, I will be on tyt tonight until about eight and so i'll roll up i'll roll up. i'll okay. be there okay good so we're yeah. gonna do a q a just so you know you guys ask us anything type moment um before you guys get to the party just to so i'll be there you know what they call the early vibes we're gonna create that early vibe for you guys so you guys just kind of just chill with us talk to us become patrons so your grandmothers become patrons you know <laughs> all of that good stuff especially so. <laughs> all these new all the new patrons who've never been to a patron party um yes. and so and just so everyone knows this is open to uh the like it or not patrons obviously and the benjamin Dixon show patrons all of you who are still over there everybody come and show up let's let's get I, I think we should have at least 75 to 100 patrons in there partying with us tonight yeah. um and James James yeah, does James that. look James will go until y'all stop tipping them <laughs> Yeah, I'm just just Y'all just not to be at ten. So I'm gonna cut him out. I'm gonna cut. No, cut no, he, cut, amen. Cut <laughs> amen. No, no, we're he not, always we're go. Not playing for free. We always <laughs> no, but we always go. We always go till about. I'm there till about three. Midnight. And then James, because I'm an old man, I'm there till midnight. James is he usually there till the midnight. midnight. Two in the morning, and 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 it's a uh, it's, and you're it's older a really than funny. Yeah, Ben, the old man, is there till right about Look. midnight. I'll be there every time. Ten thirty. I'll be so sleepy so early. Look, you're I'm not, there. Um, I am. Um, I, I, I'm so old. I forgot what I was about to say right now. Let's go to the news <laughs> of politics. That's how old I am. Good we God almighty. Off, man. He was like, Dave. Y'all it's, can't it's cut over. me off no more, man. Y'all, because my brain I'm just sorry. Done. I got to, I actually, for the first time in my life of doing this work, in my first time of my life doing this work, whenever I'm on doing a program, I actually have to write down notes. I've never had to write down notes, but now my brain is just like, it's just COVID has like this pandemic and the, all this stuff and stress. I can't, I can't remember stuff no more. Mm-hmm. So it's not y'all fault. It's just the fact yeah. that uh, I, I am genu- genuinely getting old. Speaking of mm-hmm. COVID, although the United States has had its own challenges when dealing with COVID, our neighbors to the North, Canada, uh, they have been dealing with their own set of circumstances. In Alberta, a province in Western Canada, they have an active case rate of 534 per 100,000. This is more than double the average of Canada and among the worst COVID rates in the world. One recent poll found that Al- Alberta found that 75% believed that the head of Alberta was a poor job, doing a poor job handling the pandemic, but not because they have been uh, too lax, but because they have been too aggressive in their lockdown measures. I want you to get that. Despite this tremendous outbreak that's happening, they believe that the leader has done a poor job because they've done too much to try to stop the spread. So it's not just the ignorance in the United States that is going to destroy us. It's also the ignorance to the north. Much like many in many parts of the U.S., many Canadians in Alberta can be found attending, quote, no more lockdown rallies. Switching gears a little bit after the Biden administration announced its support for the trade related aspects of intellectual property rights, trips, waivers at the World Trade Organization earlier this week. Angela Merkel, the German government uh, uh, of and the German government, rather, uh, announced on Thursday that they would continue to oppose waivers and allow other countries or rather that allow other countries to create domestic generic versions of vaccines. So the Angela Merkel has come out in opposition to what President Biden just said. A government spokesperson said the, quote, protection of intellectual property is a source of innovation and that TRIPS waivers would have significant implications for vaccine production. Speaking of future vaccine productions, these are the same points that Bio, a lobbying group that represents vaccine makers like Moderna and Pfizer, said in a recent press conference condemning Biden's announcement, echoing Merkel's government positions. They said the following, quote, this decision will act as a disincentive to companies 
to respond to the next pandemic. That sounds a lot like a threat. While the pharmaceutical companies are throwing a hissy fit on Fox News, Tucker Carlson has doubled down on his vaccine denialism. And in fact, he has escalated it. And this is what's being played to the largest audience on television, claiming that COVID-19 vaccine campaign is the deadliest vaccine vaccination campaign in U.S. history. I want us to pause and take a look at this absurd clip from Wednesday's show. After getting the shot in four months during a single vaccination campaign, then from all other vaccines combined over more than a decade and a half. Chart that out. It's a stunning picture. Now, the debate is over what it means. Again, there's a lot of criticism of the reporting system. Some people say, well, it's just a coincidence that someone gets a shot and then dies, possibly from other causes. No one really knows is the truth. We spoke to one physician today who actively treats COVID patients. He described what we're seeing now as the single deadliest mass vaccination event in modern history. Whatever is causing it, it is happening as we speak. So you'd think that someone in authority might want to know what it is, what's going on. If the vaccine injury reporting system is flawed, and clearly it is flawed, why hasn't it been fixed? And more to the point, why has there not been an independent vaccine safety board impaneled to assess what is happening and reassure people who stumble across official government numbers on the internet. But amazingly, none of that has been done. No one even mentions the numbers. And in fact, you're not allowed to. You'll be pulled off the internet if you do. The people in charge do not acknowledge them. Instead, they warn us about what might happen if we don't take the vaccine. Here's Joe Biden. Now, before we continue, I want you to take note that he did not mention the name of the doctor he spoke to. He just said he spoke with a doctor. That's how propaganda works. But this particular set of propaganda that's coming from Tucker Carlson is extremely, extremely dangerous because he is adding to the fire of vaccine of the anti-vax movement. Now, in this segment, as it continued, he claimed that 30 people a day are dying from COVID-19 vaccine from the vaccine. Right. Without acknowledging that the the statistics that he's using relies on self-reporting with zero verification and it's not considered to be accurate data. I want to emphasize that the the entire segment that he just did, which broadcasted to three million plus people to a group of people who already don't want to wear masks, but they want to open up. And now they are looking for an excuse to not get the vaccination because this entire thing has been politicized. He just gave them data from non-scientific sources, from people reporting saying that, yeah, that person died from the vaccine. And he broadcasted that as if it was a statistically significant scientific fact to three million people during the middle of a damn pandemic. Let's take a look at this last portion. In late December of 2020 and last month, a total of 3,362 people apparently died after getting the COVID vaccine in the United States. 3,362. That's an average of roughly 30 people every day. So what does that add up to? By the way, that reporting period ended on April 23, and we don't have numbers past that, not quite up to date. But we can assume that another 360 people at that rate have died in the 12 days since. So you put it all together, and that is a total of 3,722 deaths. That's almost 4,000 people who died after getting the COVID vaccines. The actual number is almost certainly higher than that, perhaps vastly higher than that. The data we just cited come from the Vaccine Adverse Events Reporting System, VAERS. VAERS is managed by the CDC and the FDA. VAERS has received a lot of criticism over the years, some of it founded. Some critics have argued for a long time that VAERS undercounts vaccine injuries. A report submitted to the Department of Health and Human Services in 2010 concluded that, quote, fewer than 1% of vaccine adverse events are reported by the VAERS system, fewer than 1%. So what is the real number of people who apparently have been killed or injured by the vaccines? Well, we don't know that number. Nobody does, and we're not going to speculate about it on this show. But it's clear that what is happening now, for whatever reason, is not even close to normal. It's not even close to what we see in previous years with previous vaccines. Most vaccines are not accused of killing large numbers of people. The Menvio vaccine, for example, is given to people around the world, often children, to prevent bacterial meningitis. 
In this country, only one person died from that vaccine in the entire period between 2010 and 2015. One. So compare that to what is happening now with the coronavirus rollout. In just the first four months of this year, the U.S. government has recorded more deaths after COVID vaccinations than from all other vaccines administered in the United States between mid-1997 and the end of 2013. Oh, my God. So do you notice, James and Rebecca, how he said, uh, I'm not going to speculate in the middle of him doing all of this gross speculation. Right. And then and then he's he put up the system. This is a self-reporting system, but it's not a system that is verified by the CDC. It's not a system that is verified and gone and researched. Right. The, the numbers that he's throwing out there. So getting out of the, the minutia of the details of his lies, what he's saying is literally going to get more people killed because they're not going to get the vaccine at this point. And I just can't believe it that a guy who already got the vaccine, this Tucker Carlson has the vaccine. He's now encouraging his audience to not get the vaccine. But when we confront him with that, he's going to say, oh, I never encouraged it. I was just trying to give them the, you know, I'm just trying so to give them the information. The he has been vaccinated. Yes. And he is encouraging people not to be not. vaccinated. It's very telling. It's very, very telling. Um, it it, you know, and it's not even he. Do, and this is what I was saying yesterday. They do these really deep, long monologues. They grab whatever they can grab that says studies show, not saying mm -hmm. where the studies came from. Uh, you know, experts say not saying who the expert was. That's what their go-to is because they have these platforms and they are professionals. So, you know, Tucker Carlson, I mean, we've been covering him like he's Donald Trump 2016. And, but it's because his voice is one of the biggest voices right now. And especially when it comes to, like you said, Ben, with this pandemic, um, you know, you're giving misinformation, you're giving information with holes in it and people are going to believe everything. They're going to, they're going to stick to every word you say, just because it came from you, Tucker Carlson, who people put their, um, you know, put their hopes in um, and definitely confide in for information. So he is going to be responsible for a lot of people. Um, being possibly dead, yeah. <laughs> to be honest. I mean, I don't know yeah. which way I can put it, but a lot of people are going to go by his rhetoric. A lot of people are going to be home miserable with their kids um, or not home. They're going to be sending their kids off to school and then having to have their kids come home because their kid chose not to wear a mask or whatever and was being yeah. an anti-masker in the middle of school, like stuff mm. like that. So um, it's going to be those kind of things that we see. But Tucker Carlson now... Um, has grown from the beginning of the pandemic when it was when they were all at Fox News sitting six feet away inside of the studio to now, yeah. like, um, you know, and saying little things like, oh, we're going to get over this. This is just like a thing. It's just not as bad as the flu, uh, blah, blah, blah. But then they're sitting six feet away inside the studio. Very telling, um, very hypocritical. But people don't really look at that and notice it and say anything about it. Like, how are they telling us it's not such a big deal? But they themselves are sitting in the studio six feet apart. The, you know, producers and them are wearing masks and, you know, all of, those them, kind are, of, things. All of them are vaccinated, too. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So but they're telling you, hey, you know, you, ain't got, you just just go ahead and risk your life for patriot, patriotic patriotism, just all of that. Like if you risk your life, you're showing that you were proud to be an, I'm proud to be an American or at least son. Like you're you're, you're that you're doing that. Right. And that's why I say. <laughs> That's why I say it's very, you know, I mean, it, whatever people are going to go by, they're going to go by. And we know the Republicans are hard to, you know, re, no matter if we put that in their face, they're going to be looking like, but there's Tucker Carlson. But here's the facts, you know. So, Ben, I definitely give you an F for stating facts. OK, because he was stating right. facts. And that's about it. Right. Uh, I and just, William Moore uh, sent a super chat saying, is sickening Tucker and Fox gets away with this? I'm not sure what their end game is. Is it to see how many people they can kill or narcissism? Definitely mm. narcissism. Yeah, <laughs> I don't really I, think I, I, I honestly been think, killing folks forever. So, yeah, it's a game to them. It's a game to them. And 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 the fact is, is that. The stuff that he's saying, if we don't combat it, even with what we have, our small platform and other platforms. And if people aren't aware of this is what your neighbor is thinking, 
this, because this is what your neighbor is listening to. You, we're going to find those people not getting vaccinated affects us very directly. Right. It's not it's not one of those things where it's like, uh, you know, it's going to be a vote in Congress and we're having a big fight over it. And, you know, if it happens, then, you know, we just got to deal. No, this directly connects to whether or not we are going to be able as a country to come out of this pandemic anytime soon. Like we're this is Tucker is effing around with 2022. I do not plan on having a third birthday in this pandemic, because Rebecca, if I'm not mistaken, this is your second birthday coming up in the pandemic and my second birthday coming up in the pandemic. Tucker is effing around with us being in this thing through 2022 and 2023 because he's speaking to so many people that already want to believe it. Right. That's the other thing. He knows that what he's doing. He's he's just telling these people what they want to hear. We have somebody in our chat room this morning already saying that dumb shit like I'm sorry. Right, Excuse right, me. Right. Like. We ain't got time for this because people are dying. People are dying. And if you don't want to get the vaccine, fine. But shut the hell up and be your own ignorant, non-scientific, dumb self, Tucker. And let the rest of us take care of the rest of us instead of you getting the vaccine. Because you know he's already vaccinated. You know he's not going to let anybody near him without a mask on. You know he's not going to go into any public setting and and and, and just chill without knowing that everybody there is vaccinated. Because he's got to live so he can keep making $10 million a year. But the rest of us, we have to suffer the ramifications of his, of his, of his, of his sociopathy. This man is a sociopath. And so here we're dealing with this. And so it's 3 million people, y'all. That's 3 million households, not 3 million people. That's 3 million televisions. I'm telling how many people are actually like tuning into this. But this is why we see that there is now in this country, they don't believe that we will ever get to herd immunity. They don't believe that we'll get to herd immunity. In other words, we're never coming out of this pandemic. And, and, and who was that? The question was like, what's the end game? The end game, I mean, the, guy, the end game is going to be a whole bunch of dead people along with the destabilized government. Like, Rebecca, we talked at the beginning of this pandemic, like this, this thing could go sideways very easily, much worse than it currently is. But with not not but. And when you add on top of that, this kind of rhetoric that's going out, this discouraging people from trying to end this pandemic, it, it's it's not a it, it is not a foregone conclusion that we, we, we will get back to normal. And with people like with systems like Fox News and hosts like Tucker Carlson, they're talking to the vast majority are the biggest number of people of any news platform. And they're helping to make sure that we never come out of this of, the, of this pandemic. I, I just I, I'm just at a loss because these people are a threat to public health. Fox News is a threat to public health. And yet he just he, he gets a second show. He's on a second show. He does two shows a day now. Really? Yeah. And he has the most slappable Rebecca. <laughs> Sorry, because I was moving my chair. I don't want you guys to hear so much noise. But um, yes, I uh, it's it's because he's so powerful now. Um, Tucker Carlson is and he's they're they're feeding off of it. He's entertainment. Um, he's misinformation, which is good for the Republicans. I mean, they're using their platform. I told you they're very smart when it comes to these things to get the message out. They're going to jump on whatever they can to oh, get yeah. the message out. Now, they're very smart when it comes to that. Don't get me wrong. They're dumb for the people who follow them are dumb, just dumb literally mm. literally dumb they're gonna take everything coming out of these people's mouths no matter how wrong it may sound um no matter uh if it sounds like they're gonna be putting their lives at their lives their lives at risk or their kids lives at risk it's going to be something they do because tucker carlson said it and we know this because when donald trump was president anything that would fall out of his mouth when this man said during a whole panoramic that to inject yourself with bleach and <laughs> folks was really pouring bleach. into the hospitals because, because they, they were, were injecting using bleach. themselves in with bleach. So they, it they had to us, make a public service announcement to say, please don't yes, use bleach. Go ahead. Yes. So, so no, th th this is what I'm telling you. People are dumb enough to follow these other people who play dumb um, on mm -hmm. camera, but as soon as the cameras are shut down, they're living totally different lives, protected lives outside of the poor people that they're speaking to, outside of the working class that they're speaking to, uh, even the rich folks that won't watch anything else but them. So mm. the people who don't want to will just 
they're okay with being misinformed because it's coming from people who look like them and it's coming from their party. And you know, the old heads, it's a specific, they, they conservative as they can be, they'll just focus on this because it's conservative. And that's, that's really, it's really dumb, but that's really it. So I, I just, I just know, I just know. <laughs> I don't even care if I win. It's on site, Tucker. It's on site, man. Cause you about to, you literally I, I wonder. <laughs> I wonder if just let if, us know where to pull up to. Cause cause here's my thing. Like politicians, yeah. I always have this thing in the back of my mind. Like politicians, yeah, y'all be playing around as if the people can't come can find you, right? Mm-hmm. Tucker is playing around like people can't come find him. And I'm not saying this to incite anything other than to say if I had a platform that large. Hell, with the platform the size that I have, I am very careful to not say things that can damage other people because damaging other people, I still got to go out into these streets and they could pull up. That's how they're acting. They're acting as if they can kill people because that's what D- Governor DeSantis is doing in Florida by lifting all the COVID restrictions. He's literally going to get people killed. Hell, that's what Donald Trump did. 600,000 people killed. The real question is, is why haven't people pulled up? Right. How how, why haven't people who have seen so many people die not pulled up on these politicians and these news broadcasters who are literally encouraging death? That's because these politicians really think they can get away with murder. And apparently so far they've gotten away with about six hundred thousand murders. But that that at some point I I fully expect this is why I just try to tell the truth and let let it be what it's going to be. Because I fully expect that if something I have said, Tucker, contributes to the deaths of thousands of people, I expect one of their family members to come find me. So I, I just I just don't understand how he feels like he could get away with that. But because he knows people are going to follow Ben. This is right. what I mean. What what is and it used to be hard for me. to I just can't I can't understand how. But then it just I'm like, we had so many. We had Donald Trump for four years mm. and we didn't know in the beginning what it was going to look like, but we thought, oh gosh, if he does something stupid, you know, people are going to people and people are going to say, hey, that's dumb. I won't follow mm-hmm. that. But they did. But then I forget that people are people. Okay. And lots of time people are dumb and they'll just follow whatever they can, no yeah. matter because, because of the, because they want to stay in racism, because they want to walk on white yeah. supremacy, because they'd rather, um, get misinformed then be informed because it's coming from a certain person that they don't like it's yeah. simple as that yeah so you know i've heard them say i've heard people say you know they don't like the message because of the messenger and that's the thing they will not accept a a a, a message a word okay because of the person who's saying it but let it come from tucker carlson's mouth they'll eat it up like it's they'll they'll take that word in like it's an evangelical telling them lies on the pulpit like that's what they do though that's exactly what they do so right (sighs) yeah real quick super chat uh one read one real quick from ben kuto ben if i said your name wrong i apologize best crew in the progressive politics uh talk game yeah, no, appreciate it. That's you. crew. Yeah, we are. Talk. Appreciate, <laughs> appreciate that. Let's talk about that. it. <laughs> hey, hey. So, Rebecca, it's uh, uh, it's going down here in Atlanta. Apparently, it is um, a big shock coming mm-hmm. from Keisha Lance Bottoms. What's that all about? So, Man. yesterday, um, <laughs> Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms, a rising political star, released a statement and video last night making a surprise announcement that she will not run <laughs> for a second term as mayor. So in her letter to Atlanta Bottoms said, as Derek and I have given thoughtful prayer and consideration to the season now before us, it is with deep emotions that I hold my head high and choose not to seek another term as mayor. The mayor has also scheduled a press conference for 10 a.m. this morning. So um, she's out of here. She's she's out of here. But it's funny because in this quote um, that you guys pulled, it says um, it is with the deep emotion. She didn't say what kind of emotion. (laughs) Yeah, I noticed that. So you see what I'm saying? She didn't say what kind of emotion, what type of emotion. But here in Atlanta, there has been a lot of, um, you know, and shout out to Keisha Lance Bottom, a fam, you graduate. You know, I always have to make sure (laughs) I say what I say to my my fellow rat. Um, but, you know, there has been a lot of things going on uh, that she's been doing um, beyond her macaroni that she cooked and everybody. Oh, God, that, that was the biggest. Y'all gotta oh, let that go. Right. Y'all Ooh, gotta let that God. go because it probably was good. Not everybody's food is uh, presented. It doesn't have the best presentation, but, still but you don't. But right. listen, listen, some food is good. 
and you don't show it on the internet. I make some stuff that is slamming and I would never put it on the internet because it's not presentable. I do this thing called rice and eggs. Matter of fact, my wife cooked some this morning. It is a, it is an amazing breakfast, but it looks Asians like- Asians been doing that. It, 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 no, no, it's, it's, no, we cook it different. We do a little seasoned salt, a <laughs> little Lowry seasoned salt, a little sugar, a little, you know, we, 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 we make it a breakfast thing, but it looks like it looks a mess. Keisha Lamb's bottom, I don't care how good, how do we even get on this? The most important I said thing it, about I mentioned this, it. <laughs> I ain't, I ain't the thing nothing. that matters, the thing that matters is like, she said, y'all can have this city. <laughs> she said, it, 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 this, this is what she said. So I said that to say there are other issues going on in, within the city that yeah. people have been saying that she hasn't been, um, you know, taking she hasn't been doing her best as far as uh, taking a hold of it, you know, and um, but there are, I can't say that she hasn't done things that have been good. Um, we've covered here on the show where she wants to eliminate um, anybody with uh, drug testing for people as far as for marijuana to get jobs. And that, right. that was amazing, although it won't be starting immediately. It may start after her term and somebody may come in to her seat that may you know, eradicate that. So I don't know. And I hope that that doesn't happen, but she's Mm. been coming up with a few things, but I, you know, how she's been handling a couple of things like when, um, they were protesting in the city and, um, you know, they were tearing stuff up. And I understand that she is our, you know, the mayor in Atlanta. Um, but, you know, she was with the rhetoric like T.I. And that's because Atlanta is Wakanda and we shouldn't tear it up. Mm. But, People were out there like, no, we're tearing all of this up because this means nothing to us like the black lives that the um, the the police officers uh, take away from us, how they feel about those black lives. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And whether or not I I felt like, you know, she was saying there was a lot of different things, emotions that I felt like she that she probably had and didn't. I I don't know. That part was a little eerie to me, but a lot of people called her out for that. I think that she knows that she just can't handle a lot that Atlanta is giving to her under these particular circumstances, that being protests, that being Atlanta um, police <laughs> police officers under fire for how they police, uh, that being um, how the homelessness in the in in, in that area, yeah, that yeah. being um, you know uh, jobs, that being um, the pandemic. So uh, I think it's been a lot of pressure for her. Um, but yeah, oh hell you know, yeah, you, you know, know it. You she's know having to go toe to toe against um, Kemp. Um, I remember that was such a big thing. Um, yeah. But, you know, I didn't feel like she fought enough, but that's just me. Um, but, you know, you know, I don't know. The and I, I got to disagree. You know, yeah. I think I think she came in, I, you know, her going against Kemp was really big for her. Um, mm-hmm. She did go ahead and get the guy that the, the officer that killed Rayshard Brooks. She did go ahead mm-hmm. and signed off to have his ass go ahead and fire it. Um, and of course they reversed that and, and they yeah. did say that it was, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, Justified, yeah. But you know what I think it, what I, what I really think it is, I think she's seeking higher office because at one point she was mm. on Biden's shortlist. Right. Let's okay. not That's forget true. that. So yeah. I really think she may not be seeking the second term to seek a higher office or try to do something different. Now that would be interesting. That would be. I, 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 I wouldn't like be surprised. That. I wouldn't only, be surprised. Yeah. The only she, thing about that, that, though, the only thing about that, though, is is that resigning or or not seeking a second term is going to be considered as a, like a defeat. It's going to be considered as like she's she's resigning, uh, even though that's technically not true. She's going to finish out her term, obviously. Um, James, you probably you could be absolutely correct, but. I, I think it would be a stronger move for her if that's what she was doing. The stronger political calculation would be to not even say this and just run. And then people would assume that she's not going for that second term. Um, so I don't know how that's going to play out. But I, if, if I'm curious if she is who I think she is, because if I was the, uh, the mayor of Atlanta and I got in there hoping to change things and then I realized that holy crap i can't change none of this stuff i can't even i can't My even voice get this, this officer this officer who killed rayshard brooks i stood up against him and then it got overturned right i uh she's out here and she's going she's getting having to go out there i ain't gonna talk about her i'm talking about me if the city was burning because they killed a black life you know i would have got fired anyway because i'd have been like you know but she had to come out there and speak down. on behalf. Yeah, she had to come out here and speak like on behalf Kamala. of the system and protect the yes. system and protect the property and stuff. Mm-hmm. So for me, the reason I would step away is because some of these political positions, they aren't worth what you got to give up in your soul and in order to be, keep that job. That could be another right. that could be another and, thing, too. So and, I see it on both yes. sides of it. 
I do. Yes. So, so you're right, Bubba. Like he, she could be running um, a, for, for a higher position. That could be something. And Ben, I actually see it the way you see it. I feel like sis is tired. I feel yeah. like you know what? She is like, I, I see that too. I, yeah, Honestly. I cannot, I cannot do this anymore. I got COVID yeah. fighting for y'all, mm. and, and y'all, y'all laughed stupid. at me saying I didn't, you know. And, and 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 yes, I was one of the people. I'm like, yo, how is she coming at people right now, and um, you know, say, speaking up against the people with the in the blackest city, telling them to stand down, go home when exactly. people are in pain about this particular thing. You can I had, me do I that. had, I had a certain, uh, I, I didn't like it, but um, like you said, Bubba, I mean. She was she she did what she could. And Ben, yes, she was speaking for the system. The city, this is why system. it's so important. And and because she came at a time where speaking for the system is still all we can do, even because like we said, just like two, three years ago, you still couldn't speak up right now. People are right. testing the waters. Right. Yep. And they're being they're, they're able to take these to, to, to take the mic um, and 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 say what they need to say, especially when it comes to people who look like them. And I'm talking yeah. about people of color, specifically black people. So when I see People like Kamala Harris sit down hmm. with people and say that America is not racist. Hmm. That to me is yeah. very telling. Oh, so, so, yeah. So yeah. that's yeah. why I say yeah. I understand when when when, when we, Keisha Lance Bottoms may want to step down because she's like, I cannot, I can no longer lick the boot anymore. I mean, this is not, I can't do this. It no ain't more. about that. I like I'm that, a black Rebecca. woman. I, like I, I got to start. I need to be at the protest too. My kids are looking at me crazy. My, I got, come I on. Yes. That's, yes. that's me, I man. I like, feel that. Come on. Come on. Because look, 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 you ain't going to get you. How many of us? See, we'll see. Let's see what her next move is. That yeah. will tell us what the reason was. If she runs for a higher office, then it was just political ambition. If she goes back and does like, you know, gets into the movement side of everything, then she's one of us who said, I just I thought I could change it through the system. And I realized very quickly and good on her. If that's the case, that she realized quicker than a lot of other people, uh, because sometimes you get in there and you you work hard and you just keep going, keep going, keep going. And then you're 30 years in, and you realize I haven't gotten anything accomplished. Keisha said, I'm three years in and I'm like, she's like I'm out this piece so you know we'll see Let, like, let's see let's she said hey we're gonna, we're, we're, go we, and before we go to break but, but there are like three people that I see right now um I know that we had um uh, Nina Turner on our show who yeah. to me is somebody who doesn't abide by systemic rules and yeah. that's why they hate her um but she's literally what we need um I her her, her, her unapologetic yeah her unapologetic her moves Indiana. she's amazing she was- and, and 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 then we have Corey, Corey Bush. This yeah. is someone who literally was on the ground as an activist um, and then turns around and, you know, gets this congressional seat and is, come on, like we're looking at this woman who does not fear what the people say. She's standing on and the Senate believes. floor and yeah. saying stuff that nobody's ever said. OK, yeah. I mean, we have Maxine Waters, who's, you know, in the last what? you know, decade we've been for us millennials who've been seeing more of her. And it's like, oh, has she always been like this in office? Um, And then Isaiah, who comes on our show, Isaiah James, Uh, am I right? Yeah. Yes. Isaiah James. That is one unapologetic man that I I really pray hope and gets that seat um, in New York, formerly of uh, Shirley Chisholm. I, I, I would love for him to take that seat. And because of his unapologetic ways yep. and how he is in the fight that he fights and i mean we need people who are who aren't afraid to look at them police officers and say no look at yeah. you mad for nothing you mad you See, mad you want to kill me huh i got you yeah. on video no they, they actually know? do so, they actually do. You want to hear something yeah. funny real quick real, real real quick you said maxine waters and you said like for the past decade i was watching different world and they gave her a shout out on Different World. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Well, I'm saying for me, millennials, but I haven't seen that episode. Let me know because I will find it. I gotta go. Right. I gotta go back and I gotta go back Max and find it again. But it's like generations, honey. It, it's on. <laughs> she's been on it. <laughs> <laughs> like, been, Maxine's still here with her nails and her, with her red nails and you know her nice wig laid to the side. Let me tell you, she's been on there forever, bro. To be messed with, she's been she probably been messing with like she's been um, fucking shit up since five years ago. Like, she's been in there like you shut up. You shut up. See, that's what happens when I slip and say one word. Rebecca's like, "Oh, I'm gonna go. Oh, we sorry. we cussing today." I need to say that because I'm like, I, she <laughs> she literally has time. been somebody uh, reclaiming has been, her somebody, time. Somebody paid for my curse words. I said, I said two. I said two. Somebody, <laughs> somebody dropping in the super chat. 
Yeah, read those super chats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got you. So Tiger says, uh, remember I said I have asthma yesterday? If I catch COVID, I die. I have a whole oh, no. comorbidity. I'm forced mm-hmm. to work at a job with anti masking, anti vaxxing, mm. COVID hits. Mm. Joe oh, Biden has casted us vulnerable Americans to the wolves. Yes, uh, indeed. Um, Tiger, man, see, we, we have keep you lifted one. up, brother. Yeah, Tiger, yeah, you're for not real, for real. Um, from Take It Easy, he says... Smiley face. <laughs> that's it. That's How about that? The chat. Then the other one we <laughs> have good. from um, Andy. Let me get Andy's super chat. From Ohio. Hey, Andy. Andy says... Good morning, best friends. <laughs> I, I love how she spelled it. Later. Andy, P.S. Hello, somebody. Hello, Hello somebody. somebody. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. We <laughs> got one more as well, too. I got five on Rebecca Cussing from Killer Cuts. Okay, Killer Thank Cuts. you. Oh, she just said one or two. Says, I'm F-bomb. not cussing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and let me yeah, just say he, real quick that yeah. I love it when y'all two get to talking and like the, like the passion is there. It just makes yeah. me love the hell what I do. I love y'all. Thank y'all. I appreciate hey, it. Hey, man. Oh, we love y'all, y'all too, man. Hey. Thank you so well, much. Well, if y'all want to keep, keep us loving each other and enjoying <laughs> this every morning, go to <laughs> patreon.com forward slash like it or not and become a patron so that you can get access to the after party. Um, also, hey, this is a big announcement, and I haven't even talked to James and Re- Rebecca about it, but we've been working on it in the behind the scenes. Oh, um, we are, no, it's, no, it's good. Uh, da- David has been David. David has been talking to you guys about it, our producer, but I haven't talked to you guys directly about it. But we are setting up the Like It or Not YouTube page. Uh, we already have a Like It or Not Facebook page. We already have a Like It or Not uh, 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 Instagram. But we're what setting about up Twitter. The, uh, we we just got to find the password for that one, but we're we're setting up the like it or not YouTube page, and we are going to in June between now and June we are going to transition everybody who is watching us right now. You're going to be watching us live starting in June on the like it or not YouTube page. We're going to give us a month transition because we don't want there to be anybody left out. We just want to make sure that we are we're giving like it or not is its own thing. It is its own thing, and it needs its own YouTube space, and it needs its own like. All of that. We want to make sure that it is born and birthed properly and that it has everything that it needs to grow. So we're going to be making that transition starting next week. Uh, we won't. We will always be on the Benjamin Dixon Show channel until June. But in June, I want I need everybody to subscribe to that other channel. Right. And I need everybody to be watching live on that other channel because we want to make sure everything is funneling and filtering in to like it or not properly. And yeah. So, they, James, when you said you said that you enjoy the morning show, it just reminded me that, you know, these are just the couple of more steps that we're going to take to make sure that the morning show is set up properly and has everything that it needs to continue going. Yeah. Yes. All right. Let's take a real. Hey, hey, um, well, we're we're actually we only have fifteen minutes left in the in the public show. Y'all want to just keep going with these stories? Y'all want to take a breather real quick? What, so, what y'all think? I think we should take a breather real quick. I want Bubba to play something. It's Friday, and it's Friday. people okay. deserve to hear some music. So I right. also got some new patrons as well too. I need to read off. So oh Talk yeah, no, we de- hey do that, do that. We'll be back <laughs> with more like it or not right after this. <laughs> Good morning again, everyone. I hope that you're enjoying the show thus far. Make sure that you are have your face in the place at the patron party. Oh, y'all heard me right? Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> All right, cool. Make sure that y'all have your face in the place tonight at the uh, patron party, y'all. It's going to go down officially, y'all. Let's get read off some of these new patrons, y'all. New patrons, we have Kimberly B, John H., Noah M. We have Paul C. Cogro Man. Peyton H. Donna W. Francis R. New Twitch subscribers. We have Jamal Cito. Oh, what? Ophio Navernus. Ophio Navernus. Thank you. Subscribe with Prime. Nikki John, subscribe with Prime. And Jay Putnam gifted one subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone that has joined the new patron. You too can also become a member as well, too. Patreon.com slash like it or not. Patreon.com slash like it or not, y'all. Before we get back to the show, gotta drop the gem on y'all. It's Friday. Here we go. I could really use a change of scenery. Yeah. Everybody Good morning to mama and daddy, y'all. Good morning, sensation. Shout out to Bryce, Chuck Diesel. 
Pixie Moon, Purple Ray Hearts. Good morning, y'all. I see y'all. Shout out to everybody that's watching us on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, wherever you're streaming from, and YouTube, y'all. Seven Sweetheart, good morning, Goku! Kamehameha! Melanie, good morning! Brother Matif, what's going on, sir? Good morning! It's to the dragon. I know I said there was no uniform, but look at that. So we all black and white today. <laughs> Mark S. Good morning. Still fly. I'm still fly. I know. I'm still fly. I'm still fly. I'm still fly. Let's go. Oh, we all off beat. Let, let, let the man sing. I'm going to stop. <laughs> like me. Free Buff. This is the Free Buff Becker song they said. Look. <laughs> hey, this is our song, baby. This is the Get Ben Out of Depression song. <laughs> I like that too. I like that a whole lot. Yeah, you just bouncing. I'm young, I'm free. Can't nobody take me. You off beat, Rebecca. <laughs> you are, uh, I feel like I am though. It's my time to ride it out. Still, I'm still off beat. All y'all off beat, but it's okay. I'm going to win that song. <laughs> ben, you too. I was like, Ben, I hear you. You're doing the runs great. Let the man, I want to hear the man sing. Let the man sing. <laughs> they said, sing, Rebecca. Ben don't want me to. Picture on the moon said, Ben, don't quit your day job. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Y'all, if you feel it, put the lions in the air. Yeah. 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 I put okay. I put raisins not in my potato salad, but I do put it in my tuna salad. Shout out to Publix. What are you talking about? <laughs> Somebody said I put raisins in my potato salad, and I was like, Oh I man, I don't do that. But I do right. it in my tuna salad. DJ exclusive. Thank you so much. No cranberries. It's not raisins. It's cranberries. Yeah, you could definitely put cranberries. I, cranberries. I mean, not in my yeah. potato salad. Okay. In my tuna yeah. salad. My tuna salad because oh, Publix you can do that. makes um, yeah. really amazing. Um, a tuna salad with or chicken salad excuse me i keep getting it all mixed up because my yes. mouth is watering and i'm thinking about Publix sandwiches <laughs> right now um but Publix <laughs> makes this uh chicken salad and it has cranberries in it and i and um I, I was almost embarrassed to tell someone that i ate tuna salad with cranberries in it because i felt like be, yeah could i be a, a person that puts yes a karen <laughs> who sprinkles in raisins karen. in her potato salad and i said not me but cranberries and is except is is an exception to the rule for me um because it gives my palate uh a a roller coaster ride of flavors i can say that and, and how do we even get on that well together. <laughs> yeah, um, because like, somebody told me i put raisins in the potato yeah. salad <laughs> yes public chicken salad i love it with, with, with my mama makes y'all Hand down, Gwen makes the, the best damn chicken salad you will ever eat in your life. Okay. <laughs> like, All right. That's okay, I'm trying to eat that. I don't, yeah. eat, I don't eat everybody's food, know. but since you family. No, nah, I'm going to mess know. with it. We're going we gonna to rock with it. When, when, right, when she cooking something for everybody. Know, I don't know if you were in Atlanta. You remember when we did the Heritage Bowl, 98? Were you still, you were there still? Yeah, right? I was there. Uh, yeah, I was there, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, man, Ben missed it. Mama bought a big-ass bowl of it up to the hotel room. When I tell you- Because you know where I was. Like two rooms. <laughs> I was, oh, yeah. <laughs> I was in Magic City in 98. <laughs> I, the first thing I did when we hit the ground, and I was like, I forgot. Pull up, 
Me, wow, me and a whole bunch of other people. Eight years old, guys. <laughs> and we were grown ass men. <laughs> we were grown men doing grown wow. things. Well, the uh, I thought you were gonna say uh, um, uh, cranberry craisins in. Um, you didn't go to Magic City, in- Bubba. Now he was eating was, that chicken salad. I mean, chicken oh, salad and drinking. Cause mama so pulled was, up. Okay. Boy, mama we look. We up. look. I got a photo. I got a photo of us. Uh, you might be in that photo because we were in the hotel, uh, Heritage Bowl, uh, Atlanta, uh, ninety eight, and man, we looked. We we look hungry. We look uh, abandoned. We look malnourished. <laughs> we look just like it was. Kids just, with no no home, so family. We look. Like, yeah, we, we we look. We looked a mess. Cause that's how hard we were working. Oh fair. man, we got only have a few more minutes in this morning show. We want to cover a couple of more stories that are uh, hitting across the nation. Uh, Professor Cornell West uh, appeared on CNN with Don Lemon on Wednesday, and Lemon asked him about the quote assault on truth currently underway in the GOP, the Republican Party. Let's take a look at the first part of his response. Everywhere you look, there's an assault on truth, whether it's a GOP operating on the big lie, the disinformation spreading through social media, the whitewashing of our our racial history. Can you put this into perspective about how dangerous this is to our democracy? Well, you know, Brother Donald, that the deepest of the... uh, uh, literary artist in, in American history, Herman Melville, used to say, truth uncompromisingly told will always have its jagged edges, which is to say, truth is always unsettling, it's always unnerving, including ourselves. So no one group will ever have a possession of the truth, but there's a difference between wholesale lies and retail lies. Right now, the Republican Party is, is wrestling with a neo-fascist insurgency. So when you talk about Trump, he's not an isolated individual. The majority of white fellow citizens in America voted for him. So it's a movement and it's based on wholesale lies, like white supremacist ideology, like attacks on Jews and Muslims and gays and lesbians and the rule of big money and the rule of big military. Now the Democratic Party has its retail lies. I mean, you have Brother Biden and Sister Harris talking about America is not a racist country. That's a lie. It is. Why did they have to tell that retail lie? Because that's a political strategy too. So that we have to keep track of the the fact that truth is bigger than all of us, brother. And anybody who enters in the quest for truth has to be willing to be fallible enough to recognize the degree to which no one has full possession. But right now, the Republican Party, what Sister Liz is dealing with. I'm sorry, (laughs) y'all. We we done got bougie as hell. Cause you know, cause I can't let that. Up. I can't let that. I can't let it keep playing at that quality. I just, I can't. We I were can't. literally in Inception. We're watching, like, watching somebody, somebody on TV. TV. Oh man, oh man. We, you know, and, like, and don't get me wrong. Listen, don't get me wrong. I've used those type of clips plenty of times, but it's just but like we don't do we're that so, in we're so, we're so, we're so we we're like it or not. Uh, uh, look, like, as soon as it came on, we was well. like, what? We said, what the hell is this? Let's see, what the hell is this? I bet you people in the audience was like, back. Okay. he went to write in David. <laughs> I, I couldn't even, I couldn't even remember what, I couldn't even listen to what the man was saying because it was like, it was like, uh, um, um, it was weird. Yeah. But let's see if we could, let's see, let's, let's, okay, let's, let's shift gears. We are bougie. I, but let's, I, I let's, heard, I heard Cornel, I, I heard Dr. Yeah, Cornel. Yeah, yeah. Speak on about. it, Rebecca. Do yeah, what would so, you say? So for me, he was definitely pointing out that um, when, when we, when we allow the Republicans or the people on the far right to say whatever they're saying, they're, it's it's an assault on the truth, basically. They're, he was talking about the many ways it can be for transgenders, for people of the same sex, for black people, for people uh, you know um, uh, of color, for brown people, all of that. And that, when they give these other people a platform, um, it becomes an assault on the truth. And that's for us who are the ones who are the truth tellers. And that's the only bit I was able to grasp. <laughs> Uh, somebody didn't understand. Ch- what somebody, <laughs> somebody in the chat room said that they thought they were expecting someone to get up and go use the bathroom. <laughs> it's and like take a, us with them. It but was, no, 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 no. It was amazing because, like I said, listen, listen. I've, I've been doing this for six years, and when I was by myself for all those years, I would grab video from it. I didn't care who had. It. I didn't care if it was a uh, uh, an Android recording somebody else's video. Oh yeah. Uh, 
<laughs> we but, were working at on that other place, and 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 they had over a million views, um, over a million followers yep. before a million followers. And we were using and we were using that kind of thing, you're right? People, and we were using that using, kind of footage. Yeah, yeah. Okay? But it just show it just shows that we here at Like It or Not want to bring you a higher level of content every Quality. single every Quality. single time. Now to the Four point K. of what he was saying. <laughs> The, the, to the point of what he's saying TV. is, you know, <laughs> we might as well run to the next story because I'm like, I'm a, I'm a, but Dr. West, what he was saying. <laughs> ben, what was he saying? Please. What was he saying, Ben? Please. Please give it. Right, right, right. I, I, just I mean, I, I couldn't really hear it, but I know it was the truth. <laughs> Whatever he said, I know Dr. West was speaking the truth in, 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 in what? Well, he was in DVD quality, uh, not even DVD quality. He was in. Uh, that was VHS, <laughs> baby. We had to take care of it. was like when people record, they're recording, but they got the camera set up on the TV, though. This is one of the bootlegs when the man's out there like, hey, I got Medea for you. I got Medea. And then you see somebody walking oh across the screen. <laughs> <laughs> stopping to look and be like, oh, my bad. My oh, bad. and that's a part oh, of your that's a part of your um, movie experience. And oh man, hey, 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 listen, <laughs> listen, listen, <laughs> and listen. No, no, no. Shout out to our producers who do an amazing job yeah, every day, every day. Because and I, I'm gonna drop this out. There. I've been on other shows. Right, and they use that kind of that, but you know, we just we got high for over here. We, just, we we did. We were like, oh, oh my god, the ghetto, said, what is it? the like, ghetto, and because we don't. Child. Somebody, somebody, somebody said it was a Nokia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it was the one that you play snake on your phone. That was a you know, <laughs> It was giving. It was giving. That was a TI eighty five quality, bro. That was a that was a graphing calculator video. That's what that was. Oh my yes. god! Yes, yes, it was. Mm -hmm. That brought me joy this morning. Waffle back TV. Uh -huh. <laughs> it, it was given the, the boombox. You got to press play and record to get your favorite was, part of the song. That would be that was being old TV that he just uh, <laughs> just, <laughs> just replaced, bro. It was Listen. given when we have to send our um our um family members uh, voice notes to Haiti, no, and we no. got to record it and send it off uh, and take like no, two weeks to get no. to. <laughs> Tune day, it's good. It's good, man. We enjoyed it. It's 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 we're having a good time. Like obviously, we're laughing at ourselves. We we're having a good time at our own Love expense. Love you, David. Man. It's it's not Ooh, no oh, shame. Not this. Oh we no! Do. Anytime we get a, 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 a somebody said chirp chirp. <laughs> <laughs> Where you at? Okay. Oh, okay. you at? I remember when Ludacris used to do them commercials. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 Listen, no, nah, bro. What you doing? Oh, <laughs> what you and what's doing? what's again? Again, y'all could go probably go back just just seven months and find a whole bunch of videos of me doing <laughs> covering it was stuff giving like that. Ra razor, it was giving pink razor oh. phone. Oh my goodness! I think everybody needed. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah, but shout out to Doctor West because I know whatever he said, it was the absolute truth. That was just. Yes. I mean, uh, I, <laughs> honestly, yes, yes. No, seriously, let's, yeah. Let's see. Let's see how we do with this one. Okay. <clears throat> Idaho bans critical race theory. I don't care. Hang on. Hang on a second, y'all. Let's let's get it out. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay. No, this next story is is actually just as important as the last story. I know we're having a good time um, at our own expense, but um, there is a movement that's happening in this country that is intentionally trying to um, push back against the narrative that America is a white supremacist nation and founded on white supremacy and has a history deeply rooted in racism. There is mm -hmm. no his there is no historical question. About that. That is a factual piece of evidence that we have plenty of historical accounts to back up. That said, Idaho is banning critical race theory in schools. Idaho's governor, Brad Little, signed a bill into law that aims to restrict critical race theory from being taught as a subject in schools and universities. Since the publication of the 1619 Project in the New York Times, a number of school districts and school boards across the U.S. have begun to adopt elements of critical race theory in their curriculum. Bills to ban or restrict the teaching of critical race theory uh, and other subjects deemed, quote unquote, divisive have been drafted into Iowa, Louisiana, into law in Iowa, Louisiana, Missouri, New Hampshire, Oklahoma, Rhode Island, West Virginia and other states. In other words, they are so terrified of the history of this country being told from the perspective of the people who were oppressed by this country that they are now making laws against that. I got to repeat it. They are so terrified of the history of this country being told by the people who have been oppressed by this country that they are actually making laws to ban it. 
This is where we are. And this is what Dr. West in that last clip was essentially saying, like this is a cohesive movement around the country that's rooted in racism, white supremacy and that in fascism. And they are attempting to control who tells the history. And here until this point, if everybody watching this, Rebecca, you and James, every all of us know the history of this country that we're taught in school is mm-hmm. absolutely a whitewashed, watered down version that makes it seem to like slaves day. were happy mm-hmm. to this day. Right. If you if you do not have, um, you know, if you didn't get the experience of going to an HBCU outside of going mm-hmm. through your early education um, from K through 12 um, and you didn't have a black teacher in school who decided to go against the grain um, in school to teach you guys black stuff um, or black history um, or real history, I can say. And usually real history puts black people at the forefront of a lot of things yeah. and they don't like that. They don't like that at all. Or people of color at the forefront of a lot of things. And they do not like that. They want to keep it whitewashed. And, you know, if you didn't have that where you were able to break out of that systemic, I yeah, those systemic, systemic ideas, systemic ways, um, systemic conversations, talking points. When I got to FAMU, they were like, as soon as you sat, no matter what, what course you had, they were stripping that from you little by little. And then by the time you ended that for semester, you were like, wait, everything that I learned, I had to unlearn so that I yeah. can learn this and look at myself and say, yeah, I am part of history here in America. Um, I'm part of history in the Caribbean. The history is so different than what I was taught about myself yeah. here by white teachers and by white educators, even black educators who were taught to say those talking points and who were taught to say those things. I mean, some places in Haiti still consider in books that they give to kids, they say yep. um, Columbus founded Haiti. So they have ripped those. It's, you know, some schools are taking those away now because, you know, they're like, we don't have to go by this, you know, this, the colonized view anymore. We can actually teach these children what the truth is. Um, and I think that they're afraid, like Idaho, they, those schools and those places are afraid terrified. of terrified. any of those things. So yeah. at this point, I think it's um, it's our duty. That's why I'm, let me tell you something. When I have my little big head kids, because my kids gonna have big heads, long faces. When I have those children, I am going to make sure that I go up to the school, see about these teachers. And if I don't see no teacher that look like me, and then if I can't have that one-on-one with that teacher and ask them what their curriculum is looking like for my child and what my child will be learning, I need to know if Columbus is in this. Because if he is, this, my kid will not be in your course. My kid will not be in your class. Yeah. You know, Because yeah. I know some stuff now. Mama <laughs> knows some stuff now. Huh. So, huh. Well. so I'm going to make sure that my kid teach. is not learning things that I had to unlearn. So you, mm, I was just thinking... Um, Somewhere in the middle of the pandemic, I I was talking to my sisters who are all teachers and I'm like, Mm -hmm. the number one thing that we have to do as black people is we got to stop letting this system teach our kids. Now I know that's that's easier said than done, and that talks about having but to create like an our entire. Kids being at home. We, we <laughs> got to create this entire. We got to create this entire infrastructure. Got to create schools. Got to you know, and, and, and it's it's far fetched, but the fact of the matter is, is we can't allow this. And it's not just. I'm honestly, it's not just black kids. Like white folks, you, your children are being taught that your children are being taught that America is this perfect nation. And Mm -hmm. they're being taught to trust this system and to obey all of the laws, even if those laws are being brought down by people like Donald Trump and Lindsey Graham, Lindsey Graham in the Senate or or Matt Gates, right, who's facing sexual assault allegations Mm. uh, from Florida, like in the House of Representatives, like those are some of the folks making these laws. And then on the state level, you have school boards who are so ignorant that they're actually out there talking about uh, uh, they're they're anti-maskers and anti-vaxxers. So we, we have our children being taught by people that have that absolutely do not have our best interest in mind. And so how could we send our children out to systems? I know why we do it. We have to do it right now because we don't have an alternative. This is not to criticize anybody for sending their kids to school because, well, we got to do what we got to do. But we got to be we got to be fully cognizant of the fact that these schools are in They are propagandizing our children. They Mm -hmm. are brainwashing our children with so many ahistorical uh, pieces of propaganda that we can't even keep up with it. There's even a curriculum. <clears throat> I will never forget. Um, there, uh, I think it was about four years ago, James and Rebecca, that they had um, they started teaching that slavery was immigration. Mm. 
Mm. Oh. That people, that people immigrate, like it was, it was a form of immigration. It was a form of, of, of like people decided, like this is the language they put in a, in a, in a history book in grade school. Jesus. And I'm like, they would rather have that taught the idea of the happy slave, the indentured servant that was happy to be here because we were being civilized by these colonizers, right? We were, we were barbarians in Africa. And so they came and they forced they migration and gave us a better life. This is the type of things that they want us to be taught. But if we talk about critical race theory, they will literally make laws to outlaw it. Mm-hmm. That's like the crazy. whole idea of Thanksgiving and how they made us think that the pilgrims and all that, mm-hmm. they blended together and they were thankful for the food. Well, y'all was murdering them people. Yeah. But they, but they land. And it, 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 it was not a Thanksgiving feast because of the goodness that you guys are talking about for them to be. You guys were killing people that already Had were systems. here. Yes. Had and and, and this was Ugh. their ground, their blood, sweat and tears. Their children's children were supposed to be raised here. They lived amongst, you know, the environment. And then y'all came and then forced us black folks to create an environment for y'all to live in. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Egg. Right. That genocidal <laughs> maniacs. Christopher Columbus was a murderous, raping, genocidal piece of scum feces maniac mm-hmm. who, yes. who absolutely came here as a he was the savage. OK, the narrative that they won't taught in schools in Idaho is that Christopher Columbus was a hero. And and he came to America and civilized the savages. Christopher Columbus, along with all those colonizers, they were the savages. And that mm-hmm. is what we're in right now. And, and I just it is, blows me away that there is an entire the, the Native Americans, the indigenous people here. They they have seen a barbaric empire rise on their bones and their land. Black folks in this country have had to help build this barbaric empire with our blood and our bones. Yeah. It's our bones that are in this ground. We've been yeah. here longer than, than, than most white people. The average white person, if I read correctly, has only been here three generations. Hell, I can go back five by myself and that's only uh, six by myself. And that's the only reason I can't go back further is because they didn't have any records. Why? Because they were slaves. So we are being taught in these schools the exact opposite. And in response to the 1619 Project, which gives the foundation for critical race theory. These these descendants of savages are starting to make laws to outlaw our ability for the people who have been oppressed by this country to tell the real history of this country. That's what they're trying to do. So and that ain't no good. They, they ain't trying to do yeah. no good. Right. They are, so. they a mess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We we got range. We can go from the complete ridiculously. We can't even hold our giggles to giving the uh, uh, like the kids. Kind of, yeah, no <laughs> to man. Really that, that, being passionate about these certain kind of things, and it's funny you said that our bones are literally what built what's in the ground, yeah. what's all of it. Um, it's interesting because you know uh, some Spaniards uh, went over to Africa, dug up in this particular area, the bones of a three-year-old that are said to be, I believe, if it's not 80,000 years old, it's 800,000 years old um, in Africa. And uh, they called it motu. And I think that means like bones or something like that. Um, and they tried to to excavate it and, and, and it turned into dust. So mm. they had to create concrete around it and remove it but guess what they took it they took it to spain you know mm, colonize, yeah. gonna colonize lead no them home where it's at because y'all take it over there that spirit of that three-year-old boy <laughs> that three-year-old whatever like it's gonna come and attack you trust and believe ancestors <laughs> are not gonna play about that y'all keep taking artifacts things that don't belong to y'all out of these different countries so people can come and make a mockery out of and point out of some things are sacred and that's one thing that christopher columbus didn't understand that's why you know like we have all the this stuff white folks ain't never gonna be okay with themselves because that's what they were taught not to that's why colonization happened because they were never okay with themselves so they were taught so then they wanted to put their they wanted to um uh uh put that on us and 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 mm. um i think and that's project but savagery. i think that that was something that is um 
they got to deal with inside. That's a, that's mm. what they got to sit on somebody's couch about because now we are coming out of that. They thought that was going to be a forever thing for us, but a lot of us are coming out of that and loving our black and 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 um, rejecting their teachings and becoming more in tune with who we are and happy with who we are. That's why we have shows like Like It or Not because we were tired of sitting and speaking for them and speaking systemically although we look like the people that we were reporting on we could not say how we felt and that mm-hmm. is no longer a thing for 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 me i can say so you know god bless america <laughs> right. proud to be gotta, in america uh, oh got a couple of super chats okay utter bull spit luckily for me i went to school here in the metro atlanta area shout out to atl and i had plenty of pro-black teachers that taught us about black culture and the real history of america i was lucky in that way yeah for real and and that's that's true too you know i went to school here actually down the street from where i am now and you know we had a lot of black teachers granted they were still teaching that rhetoric in classroom but thankfully for those other teachers that you grow that bond with they kept it real and they talked to us and i I appreciate that yeah um so real quick we had go ahead no well real quick before we get out of here and you read those last ones ben could you shout out the teacher um that gave you your um your make sure they instilled in you the right the truth the black your black teacher that did that for you hmm I just got to think my father it's been actually. so long your father my, my, okay yeah my father never let like he never let a day go we we stay rooted and grounded it, I don't believe I had a single grade school teacher who who did that for us but my dad did it for me and then then I went to HBCU and and it was everywhere it was I like, love that it was too. all the professors <laughs> yeah, and that. so shout out to um BCC um you know that BCU. you guys went to <laughs> you got to go to BCU, but Bubba, what's your? Do you know the name of your the teacher that taught you, um, possibly from the K through twelve grades, instilled you know, something in you? You know, mom and daddy really did. You know, just coming up, how they did come up. You know, they were. Oh my gosh, we were just talking to mom the other day and talking about how she had to walk three miles to school and they had Jesus. outhouses and all this stuff. It's like my God says, oh, but you know, they they kept it real with us. And then my grandmother, Ethel Jefferson. Shout out to the grandma. Lady. Ethel Shout Jefferson. Now you that is Ethel a grandmother's That's a name. name, baby. Yeah. Now Ethel you know Jefferson. she was fly. Ethel, hey. Ethel I like Jefferson, that. Okay. That's, what, that's what, mama's side of the family, the Jeffersons. So yeah. Oh, I like that. Jefferson. What about you, Becca? <laughs> Um, for me, I will say, you know, besides you know, my parents, uh, my dad, who definitely made sure that he instilled that in us, but he also had to teach us a systemic way so that we wouldn't get bullied and things like that. Yeah. You know, so that we can be able to be on both sides of it, right? Mm. Um he, so but it was my teacher and um, Mr. Days, Elliot C. Days. Hate to put your whole name out there, but he Jesus was a Christ, Florida that was a A&M. Full name. He was Professor. a Florida A and M grad, and he was he was from St. Louis, Missouri, and he was supposed to be teaching us economics, y'all. <laughs> but this mm. man would have us watching movies like John Singleton's Baby Boy. Um, yeah. and, and, what? and make us, <laughs> yes, no, he would make us literally watch it. Then we had to dissect the whole movie and That's talk cool. about what we got from it and how that made us, you know, think about relationships in the black community and what, you know, all kinds of things. And then he taught us about, and he talks about black relationships and about black love. And, um, then he said, you know, I want you guys to go visit black schools because you guys are, you know, about to graduate and they're going to send you off to white schools to go look at. I need yeah. you guys to focus on black schools. He taught talked about um, the history of things and he said, okay, I know this is an economics class. I'm going to teach you all about money and how to spend it, how to save it, how to move it, how to all of that. And then he was like, you know, but the history of where you guys come from, I need you guys to really understand this as your history. Rebecca, you're Haitian. Do you know how how important it is about your history? Hey, mm. you're from where? Mississippi? Do you know what your history is? Like, he went mm. down the road. We had one girl in our class that happened to be black, um, and um, she's from Australia. And he would tell her, do you know the importance of the aboriginals? And you know, he was just going in and teaching us, and we would be so, like, focused uh, on everything that he said. And because of him, I went to Florida A&M University um, because of him. And that was the best decision I ever made. So shout out to Elliot C. Days, Mr. Days. I love you who never tied his shoelaces and who loved to sing um, in the classroom, Luther Vandross. (laughs) So (laughs) love you, mean it. (laughs) She know this band. Those are always the teachers that like have the biggest impact on your life. And that's dope as hell, Rebecca. Yeah. You know, the other teacher I had, I'm going to be honest with you. It was, 
it was the fact that America wouldn't let me live, man. Like mm -hmm. the, you know, because I, I was properly indoctrinated with all this American BS, the American dream BS. We, you know, we had to stand up and say the pledge of allegiance every single day. All I know all of us did. And, and yeah. it just, it just came to a point where I'm like, y'all can't. And I realized this, I ain't even gonna lie. I realized this like by the fifth grade, by the fifth grade, I had so many racist teachers Oh. that I refuse to stop. I refuse to say the, the star spangled band, uh, uh, the pledge of allegiance and wow. they wanted me to, they, yeah. And it was That's just, it was age. like, but then by the time I got out in, in college and in, in uh, like, like when I left Bethune Cookman and I went to a predominantly white institution after that, um, it was just, it was just pure indoctrination without any grounding in the black experience. Mm. And I'm just sitting back like, y'all want me to believe this? And once you go black, you never, you can't go yeah, back to that learning. But especially, like, especially when we were getting pulled over every other day in Daytona, mm, like they mm. couldn't tell me, they couldn't tell me that there wasn't something wrong in this country. So my biggest, and I think this is a lot of black folks experience and a lot of poor folks experience. My, my biggest lesson that I learned came from the hard knocks of living in America. And that's why it's like, I don't care what they, what laws they pass to try to ban critical race theory or whatever the case may be. Uh, the, at the end of the day, y'all keep killing us and mm. we know better. At the end of the day, mm. y'all keep robbing us. Y'all keep exploiting us. And we're going to put two and two together. Whether or not you teach it in school, you're going to get a better education out in the streets because America won't let you live without every single day realizing that something in this country got to change. That's that's where I am. So right. anyway, we got a couple more. Yeah, ben, um, you, yeah. Go ahead. You, said something, you said something right there. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Antoine Simpson said, "These Cairns and Kens can't handle the truth." <laughs> uh, let me see. Then Laura Estrada, thank you for letting me be a part of such amazing, truthful conversations. Laura, thank you, Laura. thank you for it's being here. Pleasure, we didn't Laura. let you be a yeah. part of it. This is an open. Yeah. This is yeah. an open forum. Come and enjoy. Yeah, absolutely. Don't come with no pettiness, um, though. Damn. Right. <laughs> Scott Fleming, Ben, you have been like a teacher to me this past year, and I thank you for the oh, lessons. Wow. That's oh wow! Oh wow! Appreciate your fam. That's love. Okay. Yeah, Ben yeah. has been my teacher too. What you talking about? <laughs> okay, what Rebecca Wright. Um, Let me tell you. <laughs> more, Talk about more. it. He said my history teacher in high school had us watch almost all the episodes of Roots. Okay. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah. Oof. Yeah. Roots. Well, see, and see, that's what that's that's where my father was the biggest teacher because there would not be a time like I learned about third good Marshall because my dad made me sit down and watch the movie in when I was in third grade. I learned about uh, the Kunta Kente because my mother made me sit down and watch roots in about the third grade. And it's just like, you know, when you're, when you have, when, when, when we are in this, we are locked in and folks, I just, I don't want to get too heavy. We're going to go to the after party and we're going to party tonight, but we are in the, the biggest empire in the history of the world that has the greatest propaganda machine in terms of television, as well as this education system. And they are designing the system to make sure that people like us never understand the truth about what happened before we were born. And sometimes it is such a, it, it is such a hermetically sealed bubble. I mean, in other words, you know, growing up in Mississippi, if I didn't get it in the streets, if I didn't get it from my father, and my mother, and if I didn't get it from like our church, because we, that our church was radical. If I didn't get it outside of the system, we would never have gotten it at all. And so mm. it is incumbent upon us to make sure that as they are fighting back against critical race theory, we just keep telling the truth every single day to everybody we can. And if it is something as simple as sitting down and watching a movie that at least gives you the foundation like a lot of people criticize the Judas and the Black Messiah. But let me tell you something. That movie, while it was it not perfect, I yeah. guarantee you it radicalized somebody. So if you don't Absolutely. have any other method of teaching people than showing them Malcolm X, that movie really radicalized me when I was 12. <laughs> what you talking about? When that brother turned around and said, and the guy said, that's too much power for one man to have. And Denzel Washington just turned around and, and pointed. Boy, that thing set something off in me. So I just encourage everyone do not depend on this system to teach you or your children, because if you allow it, then they will turn you into a right wing conservative. That's what they want from you.
Ooh, we That's could just it. talk all day, but they, they somebody okay. said love your talking, but we love the music too. That means that they looking for Bubba, okay? They looking for well, Bubba. Ah, <laughs> okay. Well, all right, so let's do this. Let's 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 transition. I tell you what, we going to let's do it like this. Oh, we're not even on that channel yet. I was going to get in trouble. I was about to recommend something we're not doing yet. All right, so let's go over to the after party. Patreon.com forward slash like it or not. Be sure to go over the link to uh, the like it or not YouTube page is in our is is in the chat. Uh, uh, David will post it and we want you to go over there and to su subscribe and then everyone else. Let's go to this after party. And if you are a patron or if you're a Twitch subscriber, whatever you listen to us on, meet us tonight at 830 Eastern and we are going to have a Q&A. And after that, we're going to dance the night away. Uh, that's all I got. Rebecca, what you got? Dance I won't. I won't be there dancing the night away with you guys, but I will be there for the Q&A. And I hope that you guys are there so that I can see your beautiful faces. If we're going to be seeing faces, it's going to be on Zoom, right? So, yeah, I can see your yeah. beautiful faces or hear you guys with your questions. Um, and, you know, let's have have a good time. And, you know, just let's just have a good time. Love you guys. Mean it. <laughs> hey, James. Guys mean it. <laughs> the floor is yours, man. Give them the last word and then take them. Give them some music because they're they looking for that. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, love y'all, love y'all, love y'all. Thank you so much again. Y'all keep on supporting patreon.com slash like it or not. Patreon.com slash like it or not. Love y'all. I'll see y'all on Monday. If we don't see you at the after party. You don't mean nothing to me. You boys like you every dinner. I don't believe what you preach. Y'all just a rookie beginner. Hang out with boys on the street. Like that will make you a winner. I don't believe what I see. Why you wearing gold?